一旦止めて。We are able to light the engine, extinguish and relight it many times. By doing that, we can put the system into orbit more accurately and correspond to many missions. And it helps reduce launch costs, since the rocket carries and uses less fuel. Fueled and standing on the launch pad, the rocket will be ready to unleash an extraordinary amount of power. But that's also when things can go horribly wrong. The worst rocket disasters in history have all taken place on the launch pad. The most devastating happened in the Soviet Union on October 23, 1960, when an intercontinental ballistic missile accidentally ignited on the launch pad. Fueled by 160 tons of burning propellant, the flames were unbelievably intense. 126 people were killed instantly, and another 50 later died in hospital. Safety is a major priority at Tanegashima's Yoshinobu launch complex. To protect staff from disasters, they've built the H-2A launch control room inside a blast-proof concrete blockhouse. This control room is situated below two levels and is about 10 meters below ground. This building is situated only 500 meters from the launch pad and is within the danger zone during the fueling process. There is a possibility that the rocket could explode. This whole building is made to withstand explosion and built to protect people. For H-2A flights 8 and 9, this underground control room will soon be a hive of activity. Two launchers of the H-2A rocket, with their satellite payloads totaling more than eight and a half tons, could finally propel Japan into the big league. In the space of just four weeks, their dreams could come true, or be dashed to the ground. Every satellite launch is a nerve-wracking moment. Hundreds of millions of dollars of sophisticated electronics poised to deliver vital services to mankind. Now, finally, H-2A Flight 8 is ready for launch. On board is the four-ton ALOS satellite, nicknamed Daichi, which means Great Land. It's hoped this remote sensing satellite will generate vast amounts of data about the Earth's surface and provide vital warning signs of climate change and environmental impact. But first, it has to be launched successfully into an orbit 700 kilometers high. Right now, the $480 million satellite is sitting on top of 275 tons of highly flammable fuel. Liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen chilled to minus 253 degrees Celsius. When the engines are fired for the launch, the fuel is rapidly heated up to 3,000 degrees Celsius. It's a critical moment. But Flight 8 lifts off without a hitch. Daichi is on its way. Just 16 minutes and 16 seconds later, the satellite separates from the launch vehicle and is safely injected into its orbit. Flight 8 is a success. Now, staff at Tanegashima Space Center must focus on the next launch, Flight 9. Just 25 days away and carrying the heaviest payload ever attempted by Japan. Flight 9's first and second stages have already arrived. Transported across Tanegashima Island in a slow-moving convoy in the dead of night. The destination? The launch complex's Vehicle Assembly Building, or VAB. At 81 meters in height, the VAV is the largest structure at Tanegashima Space Center. It was fully upgraded for the H-2A program. As a result, two launch vehicles can now be prepared side by side. This is where they assemble the rocket very carefully. 
they lift the H-2A's first stage by crane onto a mobile launch platform. Once secured, the second stage and interstage sections are lowered on top. Because of the weight of Flight 9's payload, the rocket will have two solid boosters and four additional strap-on boosters. Throughout this assembly process, engineers check the rocket's onboard systems. But because of the relative simplicity of the H-2A's design, compared to its predecessor, the H-2, this process takes a third of the time. When we changed to H-2A from the operation perspective, what used to take three months now only takes one month. Meanwhile, the rocket's precious cargo, MTSAT-2, undergoes final assembly and testing in a climate-controlled, dust-free environment. Once they've loaded the satellite into its fairing, they transfer it to the VAB and fit it on board the H-2A launch vehicle. The Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency has an ambitious plan. Over the next 20 years, it hopes to launch more satellites like MTSAT-2. The aim is to create an orbiting information gathering and warning system for disaster and crisis management. The devastating impact of earthquakes, tsunamis and volatile weather events has made this a high priority. The network will also monitor global environmental change. Satellites are critical to modern life. Nowhere more so than in Japan, one of the world's most technologically advanced countries. Japan's ETS-8 series of satellites is designed to test the use of mobile communications from higher Earth orbit. Eventually, mobile communications will go through satellites instead of receivers on hills. This will put Japan at the leading edge of digital communications. Right now, Japan is keen to gain a slice of the commercial satellite launch market. But that market is changing dramatically. Since 1980, a European consortium, Ariane Space, has become the world leader in commercial launch services, with more than 260 payloads successfully launched into orbit. Now the deck is being reshuffled as new alliances form in the global market. Japan's Mitsubishi Heavy Industries has joined in partnership with Boeing Launch Services and Ariane Space. Japan is a partner of the International Space Station. Japan wants to be present on the commercial market, and so this is why we team together with Mitsubishi Heavy Industry. The International Space Station is a staging post for nations with dreams of colonizing space. Among them, Japan. Since 1990, Japanese scientists have been working on a space module that will be joined to the space station. Named Kibo, meaning hope in Japanese, the manned experimental facility consists of a pressurized module about the size of a large sightseeing bus. This will allow up to four astronauts to work comfortably in an Earth-like atmosphere. Attached to the pressurized module will be an exposed area where they can conduct experiments in open space. Astronauts will be able to exchange experiment payloads from the pressurized module.